six meeting of the wrong for select board. First order of business is the approval of minutes from April 29th meeting. Are there any uh, edits or corrections or anything? Folks have? No. Mm -mm. So by consensus, we'll pass the April 29th minutes. So we're at community input. Gentlemen, I believe you're here to talk to us, right? Why don't you come on up? Okay. Hey, my name's uh, Jim Walcott. I'm from Dover. I'm Colin Spencer. I was from Ralston, and now he's from Summersworth. He wants to come back. <laughs> so, I, without having a lot of wisdom, I bought this lot on Shady Lane. So we're just looking for a little bit of guidance. Are we thinking about coming back, or is it through the plan board starting all over again? Because we don't know what happened the first time. But we're just trying to find a way for Mr. Spencer to build a house here and be able to, uh, I know we need a variance from the zoning board to um, have a house building permit issued on a uh, private road, a classic road, um, and also about the definition of a road being a uh, class six, I believe. I can't remember. We're just finding all this stuff out. But anyway, I'm just seeing if there's anything you have input before you hit the zoning board. Um, you know, basically we want to keep it as a class six. Maybe the zoning board will let us do a driveway or a class six gravel driveway. We're not sure, but is there anything here that jumped out of anyone still on the board from back in 2017? <laughs> Like a bad penny. <laughs> That's what I heard. I've been mean, reading the minutes of the meeting. I don't want to prejudice anything in the process, but this is. Um, yeah, I, I now understand that. I, sort of I, the bane I of my existence in the time on the planning board and, and on the slate. I was on the registry lie. and uh, I, I was told I could just start a road because I went to the registry and pulled the plans. It was recorded and I'd never seen an unre a plan that was conditional recorded before and it threw me for a loop. And I, uh, I, uh, so I just bought it and I probably and definitely shouldn't have. Well, I can't tell you your business, but uh, <laughs> anyway, I, someone may have given you that information. So yeah. I don't know. Um, you would need to go to the planning board and talk to them. Um, I can tell you though that select boards don't have to issue building permits even if you go through the ZBA and the planning. That's why I wanted to set this from the beginning. Oh no, we so realize right. you could be turned down. That's so you can go through. It could be very, very expensive process. Mm -hmm. And you could then, because we, by the time you finally finish with all the process, none of us may even still be sitting here. It could be a whole new board. I mean, believe it or not, it could be very lengthy. And even then, they could just say, nope, sorry, we don't issue building permits on Class 6 roads in general. Yeah. We, we've had a couple in town that um, have happened over the, I mean, they're talking like decades ago, um, when they didn't have any process in place. We have a set of guidelines that we would use if... Um, if we, if you went through all the entire process, um, and we thought it was a, 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 a project that met certain criteria that are outlined in those guidelines, mm -hmm. but there's nothing to hold this board or the next board to those guidelines because they're just truly a guideline set up. Yeah, they're not law. But right? they're not law, right? There's not an ordinance, so. Um, yeah, I, do I, I, um, I don't want to mislead you. I also don't want. I mean, I understand it's. it's an expensive investment, and I don't want to mislead anyone, but it will be a very contentious process, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is a fair way to put it. I think I've never seen so many people turn out ever to a planning board meeting over something that didn't seem all that overly complicated to me, but just because of where it is. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, well, hopefully we can smooth things over, so there's no, the plan as it exists now, um, we could stick with something like that and then come back with, with a different light on the road. Or... So, so you're looking at some of the the conditions. Really yeah, we just like to get to keep, just keep it up. Right now, it looks like a driveway coming all the way down in, right? You wouldn't change too much of that. You just extend it about 70 feet to get to the lot. There's a berm here. Now we remove the berm. Someone put a berm in over here to yeah. on the road. The berm can't, can't stay there. It right. shouldn't be. So we it shouldn't be there anyway. Yeah, but the town doesn't there. maintain it as a class six We would take that out. So. I mean, he's just looking to extend. We go to here now. So he just needs to get down another about 70 to 100 feet to be able to get access to the lot. Mm -hmm. More like a driveway situation, we could do improvements for you know emergency vehicles and those type of things, creating turnarounds on the lot, um, do the things that I know is a concern for the planning board after reading the minutes. Um, but it's just more like you got, I think the only thing service. that will change is the mailbox out here. Um, but, uh, okay. I thought there was a discussion after the approval to not uh, pave it. And I, at that point, left the planning board. The previous select board didn't really want to see it paved. Right. That doesn't mean this board does, because it was, um, I 
Had you met, gotten on at that point yet? It was a, it was a multi-year process. This was yeah. not a no. This was not a yeah, one and done kind of meeting. This was very contentious. I can't wait to watch the tapes on YouTube. Very, very contentious. So, so um, I am hesitant to give you any kind of okay. advice or. or, or I'm, pretty, you know, I'm sure people will show up. We, really, uh, we can get the neighbors' support here. I have the neighbors' support. Yeah, they both they both like the idea. When I talk to they like the idea of only having one house, and they, everyone's worried about there being a multifamily unit, so building something large right here. Um, so we'll try to get the neighbors' support here and see what we can do between now and then. And that would certainly, I would, that would help you in the planning board process for sure. But you're going to need to go to the ZBA and get a variance. Mm -hmm. For certain things, and that was outlined. Actually, I think it might be on the plan. It, it just so, says from the letter from Attorney Radigan, which well, yeah. <laughs> so I will. Um, yeah, it was so added on, and but uh, it's you. You need a variance, which is in the letter from in Radigan's letter. So oh, no, you need a, you need a variance for certain things. I'm so, trying to remember. So they never plan board. They never went to the ZBA. No, no, they yeah. never went. That was part of the problem. So, so it's we would get to the that step, and like you need to make that application to the ZBA and. I don't want to speak for the other folks that owned it before. I don't know why they didn't do it, but they didn't. So yeah, I know that was just what I saw at science. So I thought they went to the ZBA should have been a little closer. It would have been a lot easier for one. So that. That, that, so our next step process was their process. Come up with a plan, go to the ZBA, and then come back and see what all the other boards have to say. I guess. So that was you need to go to the ZBA first, and yeah. then and then the planning board, right? Well, it depends on whether or not you want to pave it or not. My understanding of the conditions is that you can work with the select board and upgrade it to Class Five standards, which of course is the expensive way to go. Very expensive. If way. you're willing to do that, then you don't need to go to the ZBA. The right. ZBA is. Well, willing to do that, it's just that who wants to pave this? Who wants to build a good road back there? I mean, well, and so this board, at the time when that was approved, mm -hmm. preferred that it not be paved. But for it to not be paved, you would need. Um, the variance. Uh, that's what we're going for. We have to wait for the next town meeting to have that vote on. I believe. I mean, it's a, when you build a class five road, I believe that the town has to vote on it because you're going to get well, the, the We can. They would have to vote to, to accept it. Mm -hmm. or to accept but, it. but we, we by statute, outlay lay our roads and mm -hmm. and all that. So. Okay. Um, which is it's going to be a very expensive. So they would process, prefer a gravel so. anyway. So maybe a class five road was wrong. You know, it's, it's oh no! Would no so you, would, yeah, you would stay. A, you would need a, a variance because um, it's prohibited to, from building on a class. I don't want to see a big highway down through there. So. No, and they didn't even want to see a single family house at one point. So I didn't quite the fight. So I talked to Sean, who lives in Jason's old house, and our band doofuses, and they're all. So they, they're happy to Carlton, you would be very well served. I mean, again, I don't want to give you I know, advice on how, what you should or shouldn't do, but you would be very well served if you went to the planning board to yeah. have those people show up and actually speak in your okay. case because they were those same, well, not the folks that bought the LaVoy's house because they weren't there yet, yeah. but the, some of the other folks you mentioned were very, very, um, yep. very, um, very loud in their opposition, let's just say. Because they don't want that road going through and when was Douglas Hospital, I will say, because public record, built their, their, back, their entrance, the main entrance to the hospital, yep. in the rear of the building, which doesn't make any sense, right? Because they wanted the town of Rollinsford to reopen that road and make it a class 5 road. Yep. And the town, 25 years ago or more, said, no thanks. We didn't want that. They wanted it to remain rural over there. So and that's yep. why a lot of folks were very upset, even with a single family home. It was, it was presented in three or four different ways yeah. to the select board at first and then not to the planning board a different way. It wasn't a consistent process. We would tell the applicants one thing and they would do the opposite at times. So yeah. you would be well served to have an architect drawing out your plans and yeah, we'll having someone you can trust. And we'll bring in the uh, project you know, engineering to do to, it. I was to, just surprised. Why would they give a waiver for, to subdivide off a lot of that's not performing? I and mean, they got a waiver for it too. Who knows? But, but it does conform with a class five road. Yes. Yeah. Just not. It doesn't. Right right the only hiccup is that it's not on a class five road. You wouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Yeah, it's the class six. Is. All right. We'll do our due diligence. We appreciate your time. Sure. And just so you know, there was one recently in the last year, wasn't it? On the other side of town, that was rejected mm -hmm. on a class six road. Not so by uh, before it got to us. Mm -hmm. By the much more complicated. Right. So uh, by the uh, planning yeah, board. Yeah. 
So there's a mixed history. I want you to. I don't want anyone to go on this with, with rose-colored glasses on. No, this one we got to so, give a shot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but there. Are Sorry. Past <laughs> president. Yeah. Oh, okay. speculations. Okay. Talking with you is. It, it is. Very well. Thanks. It's going to be. Um, It'll be fun. A very contentious process. Not so much from the select board's perspective, and we try not to be adversarial with folks to try to tell you things up front, but unless something has changed dramatically over there in that neighborhood, um, that part of town, it may be a difficult, difficult process for you. Just, I want you to be aware of that, that's all. Okay. And with no guarantee in the end that you get, we'd have to say, we, we can't give you an opinion on something we don't know about the exact plan yet, so it wouldn't be fair. To you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a nice night. Anyone else here for public input? Paul, you're here for the water. Oh, good. All right. So we are going to then, we're not going to move on to police. Did the chief come in? Did I see him? He won't be here until 7.30. 7.30 it is. We'll do it then. And the fire chief's not here yet. But George, you are here. Sorry. We have been sitting in front of you. Come on up. Let's do this. So we believe Aaron from, well, Aaron's coming at 7. Just so you know if you want to stick around for for that part of the conversation. All right. So why don't you go through what you have for us first, George, and then we'll we'll go through our list. Oh, well then let's go through our list. That's fine. All right. So we have um, the driveway culvert. Um, you were here for right last week, right, for that conversation? Yeah. I think. Okay. So the municipal association says it's not a good idea for us to do it. But um, there is a there is a couple of folks in town that want to talk to us about it. They may or may not come in tonight or next week or some other time. I guess, so, but it's on here just in case. So, uh, DES permit for Sligo Cobra. That's what Aaron's going to talk to us about. Oh, come right up, Mr. President. How about that? He must have, right? Waiting outside. I heard my name. Well, all right. Let's talk about the permitting process. I hear it's getting easier, which is maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer I was looking for, maybe. So there are new rules for legit in process. Okay. Um, they have not been enacted yet, but okay. the idea is that they will streamline the permitting process. So do you know what stage they are in getting these rules implemented? Uh, they have been through development and have they gone to the government yet? They have not gone to government council. I would assume that's the final stage of approval, but... It's been through a series of hearings, public hearings. I think DES is now taking public input and incorporating feedback and finalizing. So our best so guess could is be later this year. Yeah. All right. And there's no guarantees it would change what happens for the particularly a minor permit. Okay. It's more geared towards some of our permits go in and they have a 75 day review period. Um, and then in, on 74 days, you get back what's called a request for more information, <laughs> which stops DES's clock. Oh, great. And we have 30 days to respond, and then it's you know, it's intended to streamline some of that and, and just make the process easier. For, for a minor permit, it doesn't usually take 75 days. It's usually quicker, and that's what we're probably dealing with on Sligo is a, is a minor permit. Right, right. Okay. So are there questions at this point from folks? So how will we know if it's a minor permit? Nope. Really know until you get started. You start since the application corresponds with the yes, but based on our experience, and actually we did reach out ahead of time already um, as you know for a generic project to ask about right. in these with these parameters what would it be? And I think it's like likely a minor. The, the one wild card is the same thing that we talked about here. We're we're looking at potentially replacing that structure. Uh, the basic concept was the adjacent uh, historic parcel. Um, as soon as you touch wetlands. Um, a lot of other factors get pulled in, archaeology, his, historical, right. and it could just mean that there are some historic review needed, but DES has been exercising a little bit more common sense than... Does um, DES then get the cultural resources involved, or, is it, or do all, they just do it all in-house, or do they have to do it with other departments? Um, it, it's the Cultural Resource Committee, which, it, which includes historical and archaeology, so okay. that's how that group from DOT or from DDS gets pulled in, Okay. Uh, if needed. Some, sometimes when, you, when you're doing some minor repairs, like we're talking about here, DES can, they, they can use common sense and say, okay. we don't want to overreach. If we were replacing it, I would say there's no way we're going to have right. to do... Right, we're just uh, right. You know, Thanks, right? We're not... Right. Okay. Expense would be four times as much. Well, for sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But, okay. 
And there are some folks in town that would really want to see us preserve the historic structure as well of the sure. culvert. So and there's some, I'm sure, some credibility there. So you don't see them every day anymore. Does this stop the process of Sligo Road? I mean, I don't know where we are in the road. This is not where we're doing our stuff. Right? Well, what we're going to do is not affecting the paving. It's not going to affect the paving at all. Okay, so this, this is, is the one that we talked about last year. Correct. The, the old one that had the double. No, over. no, that isn't the same one. Oh, um, then tell me where. This it is. is the one that's in the gully by. Uh, With the red house at the bottom of two hills. It's the B base. Okay, so it's not the one that had the. They were talking about replacing that one before I came. Oh, okay. And that's where this whole processing. It was a single. It was a double lane, obviously, like most of all of Sligo. Uh -huh. And then we had turned down to one lane. We had Jersey barriers up. Um, to yeah. So it's, it's 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 more of a bridge, really, it's a small bridge than a culvert. It's a, it's a box, old granite box culvert from the mid 1800s, right, in the yeah. 19th century. So it's actually beautiful to look at, but from underneath. But if you're into that kind of thing, but um, I guess I kind of am, but. Um, it looks, it's more of a bridge than like an underground culvert like with pipes that we've been dealing with on the other end of the road. Okay. But Sligo's got lots of little hidden uh, gems. treasures and jewels yes. and gems for it, for sure. So all we want to do is shore up the bank and okay. with the graph and stuff to support it from washing out again. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing anything with the culvert, you're just going to shore up the bank. The and we still have to get all this. As soon as you impact below what's called top of bank, um, that's wetland jurisdiction. And then even if it's not to the culvert, it's really part of the culvert that triggers it. And the fact that if it was 48 inch diameter pipe or smaller, we could do a much easier process. But that, you know, like you said, it's sort of a bridge you know, in, in that 6 to 10 foot range. It's, it's a big culvert that bordering on bridge. So. I think it's big enough where DOT, or maybe with DOS, DES, I guess, suggested we go onto the DOT bridge list. For, for other funding because it's large enough, it just qualifies, right? It just it, so we, when we evaluated it, we, we came up with a whole range of options. One of them was replacement. And we said if you were interested in replacing it, you could do a hydraulic report because likely uh, from a hydraulic standpoint and environmental standpoint, it would get greater than 10 feet and then you would uh, be eligible. But we also came up with some repair solutions. We were just trying to offer the town you know, the whole range of things. So I don't want to be Aaron, the condemner that wants to come in and replace your historic no, no, but, but we actually made an application with DOT to get on the list because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be many, many years before we ever come close to the top of the list for the funding, Ten plus. For the match, right? Yeah. So, um, but this sounds like a much better option, actually, because we get to save the structure mm -hmm. and um, it's not quite as expensive. So. so what is the next step then? Is it a task order for you all to see what... what yeah, there's a different us? ways we could do that. We could put together some nominal amount in... in do some correspondence, do whatever we can with that, and, and see how far we get. We can make some assumptions, assume it's a minor permit, and that there's no archaeology, there's no you know, historic right. investigation, and you know, bring it through a minor permit, and right. if it's something different, we can deal with it then. Okay. So however... Because this is part of the plan for this year, George, right? To, to get this worked out. Yeah, sure. Right. Yes, we can. So then it will make it a, a two-way road again? It is. That? We, we actually opened it back up. Oh, okay. Already. So. Okay. All right. So where's the funding coming from? Us? The culvert fund, right? Yeah. But we're not doing a culvert. Well, no, it's, it it's is still part of that. It's culvert it's repair. repair. Yeah. It's culvert repair. Yeah, because we're culvert. shoring up the banks around really? the culvert. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not like we're doing it like a, a half mile down the road. It's, it's, it's the shoring up of the banks is directly related to the culvert. And the reason you okay. need a permit is because Right. Okay. It wouldn't okay. be. Okay. So, oh, I mean, trust me, I mean, we don't want to um, pull it out if it's not. Mm -hmm. We can't run there. So. Mm -hmm. If DES determines it has historical and archaeological implications, does HTA handle those investigations? Uh, we don't do archaeology, we don't do historical. We have some consultants that we work with very frequently. I have several projects right now where. She seems bizarre. Yeah, historic documentation company, Rich Casella, he's excellent. They do what's either uh, an inventory, individual inventory form, which is this amazing history usually of the structure or the bridge or an area, and then um, independent archaeological consultants there on Portsmouth. Um, they come in and they'll do a phase 1A, which is really a site review. They'll say, well, this is a flat area. Native Americans could have you know, had campsites here, so there's a likelihood that there'll be arrowheads and other things, or you know, this is near a water body. Maybe there's an old grist mill, and then if 
they determined that he needed more investigation, they did some test fits, but yeah. So we have those relationships that can be done. You know, there is cost to it. It's not astronomical, but you know, it would be above what we'll assume for, for the task. And we'll, we'll hope that we can coordinate with DES, they'll use some common sense, that we're not impacted. Archaeology usually comes into play when you're impacting areas that haven't already been impacted, been impacted, right? So if we're within the, the slopes of the roadway around the culvert, that stuff has all been disturbed as part of the culvert construction. It's usually when we're putting a new bridge, maybe off alignment, that we get into some lands that might not have been all disturbed. Okay, well that makes sense. Then. So do we want to, um, do we want to ask Aaron to prepare um, task orders? Isn't that what's called that? Yes. For this project then, for to yeah. start okay. working on this then? We'll have to look and see if our general services agreement is still active. active. I don't um, know if it's probably expired, not. which okay. that doesn't. I think we did, but I don't know how long they go. We for. might have done it for two years, the last round, so we might still be current. I'll take a look. Oh, I thought we just got one, though, last year. I thought we, we did one before year. Suzanne left or just after she did, but I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might have been. I don't know. Okay. Let's take a look. Check check it. It. Exactly. Was it last year that we did the Blue and Mill review? Yep. So we might still, we might have done it for two years, so we didn't run into this having to renew So we review. might be in the. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be good if we are. But I'll take a look. And you're also here to talk to us about. Wastewater. Stormwater, right? Not Stormwater yeah. grant opportunities. Oh, Are you? I, I apologize, I got back to you late about that. Are you prepared to give just sort of a basic kind of overview? Of I'm prepared enough. I'll, I'm assuming <laughs> for <laughs> well, listen, the person in our office. We, it's okay. If we don't mind keeping it general. Sure. Our, um, general Paul Cazalt is our us. chairman of the Stormwater Committee, oh. and George and Miles and I are on that committee, so we can try to take some basic information back to the committee sure. and decide whether or not it makes sense for us right now. Okay. So from a high level, uh, DES through the state revolving fund offers grants up to $30,000. Okay. They call it a loan, but it has principal forgiveness, assuming you fulfill the obligations of it. Okay. And this would be applicable to stormwater asset management. Hmm. So for Rollinsford, we envision that would be uh, an update on the locations of all your stormwater features, your catch basins, your outfalls, an assessment of the condition of those features, and then developing uh, a capital improvement plan or a stormwater capital plan to you know, figure out what you need to do in your system over the next 10 or 20 years or whatever the planning period is that you want to pick. Okay. And Paul, why don't you come up and sit up a little bit. So, how, uh, how well funded is the revolving fund? Uh, I believe it's very well funded. So there was some, there was monies, um, I don't want to misspeak, but through some I think it's some legal situations that DES has established this fund. That it, okay. I believe it's well funded. It, okay. As opposed to stay, say the state for J program that's right, ten right. plus years out. But okay. I don't think there's any issue. But John Jackman from our office, I can write that down. as okay. a question is, you know, is there risk okay. if you take a loan that it doesn't, right. you, know, you don't get your principal forgiveness? Right. And it, so it is. It's a straight loan. It's not. There's no. Um, um, there's nothing. That, there's nothing we would have to put out ahead of time. I do not. I don't think so. I think it's. Are there um, payments while you're waiting for principal yeah, forgiveness? Sorry. 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 Well, it's it's really helpful if you could even just ask the questions and, and then we can yeah. have a follow up conversation. Yeah. So, like, it, it, it sounds as if it might be something that we'd have to wait for um, town meeting approval for so. And that was my other question is about time frames. You know this. You know that magnitude of monies is not not being budgeted doesn't make it right. very workable for this year. So what is the um, when do these funds come into play? If we apply for it and get approved this year, when do funds come in? When do they have to get expended? So the first step is actually the, the pre-application, and I believe that's due June 1. And that doesn't obligate the town or DES to do anything. That, it, if, you, if your pre-application is selected, then by June 1 next year, that's when you would put a formal application in. So this ah, is actually okay. a long process. Okay, so we're, all right. All right. And then the pre-application is pretty simple. I think John filled out most of it in the email, but they give you an idea. Okay. Um, so what we thought the program was. So this like. is something we do want to apply for right now, then, because we wouldn't even have an answer. Or be right. Ready for so I don't believe there's any so. obligation okay. at this point. Okay. Except my concern is we're not going to spend this money until the next year. 
because then we, we have to wait for for the voters to right. vote on it. Right. So you're talking, uh, you, you know, work to begin in March 2020. Will will the state allow that? You know, would you know? Uh, this is their process. So they, I mean, they recognize that a pre F can't act on it until the following year. So uh, I can get those. So answers, I think it, at the right. timeline, like better understanding timeline, you know, because also the MS4 permit has different obligations in different years, so it would help inform right. what we do this year. Maybe we don't want to do something this year because it would be part of that project next year. Right. Well, but but if it takes a full year to get, you're just getting pre-approval now, and you don't know until you you you're actually well positioned because you're going to have something on the warrant in March, and it can be drafted in a way that, you know. Shall the town you know, apply for and accept a grant or whatever exactly. the program is. And if you don't get it, then you don't do the project. I mean, it's pretty, but you're not going to get permission. You can't do the project unless right. you get permission. So. Yeah, but we don't, we don't have a choice. Some of this work, we're going to be forced to do it. Right. Year two, because right now is year one of a MS4 permit. So then we'd have so to, you'd have to have two, two and three comes, articles, right? and then all the work just go gets regrafted uh, up. Okay. One is the stormwater assets, which is principally the uh, the outfalls mm -hmm. and the catch basins, but it can be uh, retention ponds and uh, municipal assets to you know all that stuff. And besides that, there's another revolving fund for Stormwater planning uh, management, which is seventy-five thousand on top of this, which okay. is a separate program. And so, are you aware of that, Aaron? Or is that a different field? Uh, that's a little bit different field, but I can tell you, John. John is aware. He's um, well versed in that. If you want to talk about bridge funding, I know every potential source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I know it's not your. So I really appreciate you. Um, would it be okay with you if we have Paul reach out to John yes. and maybe talk about scope and what is the cost that would be great. for the what the scope is that we think we need right. and then maybe I we can think go that would be very helpful and what what type of timeline to uh, Paul that um, so we heard what this program is but the other grant program is, is see what the timeline is there and how the state can work and, and do we want to do both of them right yes. maybe yeah I would say yes because it's completely separate okay. Yeah. Uh, the stormwater assets ties into the, to the, you know, to the stormwater plan. Okay. But it sounds like it's separate. Okay, they separate them. I don't, I don't understand why. I have no idea. Because EPA wants us to develop a, uh, you know, stormwater plan by ne next month. So <laughs> okay, and, great. And so I've been working on that. And Thank you. I'm almost, working on that. Almost done. And on top of that, part, part, part of the stormwater plan it is a listed discharge detection and elimination plan. Okay. And part of that is to look at what, where is the outfalls, look at uh, uh, particularly, you know, looking at the catch basin map. Right. Where is the catch, catch basin flowing to? At, you know, at first it was simple, but then it became complicated. Okay. Because some of our catch basins flow into the uh, state catch basin. Oh. And it makes that oh. junction a out, outfall, which is bad news because in three years we have to conduct dry, dry weather sampling okay. of, of the water pollution. So it's just like everything is get, getting Thank you for help. We should say, start by saying yeah. that. So, um, but, but the bottom line is that there's a plan which would you know, which we have is a simplified thing. So, so we have a we have a map, right? Of well, and that's that, I can't remember the name. That used to work for Scott, Scott. Scott. Yeah. But but it's yeah. it's um it's kind of um a very simplified version of what we need. And so I'm wondering that very well maybe we have a starting point, right? So that Paul can well, get some right. information. But I'm hoping that, yeah. that okay. the asset management grant perhaps can include not just what Aaron's talking about, but right. can really maybe scope and prove, you know, and improve the map because we know it has things that don't really make sense, like intersections yes. that do that are outside of storm drains. Yeah. We found some of that when we did the lower mill outfall, um, pulling that map together that we, we fixed what we could. I think we provided the town with what we thought was an update on that. We did a little field inventory, but 
And that's a great example. When we came and talked to the board about doing that project, we couldn't tell you that it was the most pressing project. We just knew that it was an issue. The town recognized that it needed to be replaced. Right. And it was a lot of money for the town. Right. But was it the best project? Probably, but you know, helping prioritize. Right? What is the next project of that scale that you need to start planning for? Could be good to know. Yeah. 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 You know, but the thing I envision is that you, you could help us with GPS lo locations and you put that on a map which you know, with different layers, and uh, one is the state map w with a MS4 area and the you know paired waterways with, with the outfalls. So that George, he he can take a look at a map, and if we have an illicit discharge that we find in th three years, right. and then next year that uh, you know we we can trace it up because mm -hmm. you have to find those. I mean, so. Yeah, there's a lot of great things that once that system is mapped and in the GIS that you can do, John gets so excited, he'll come in my office and tell me about, <laughs> you know, you click on something and all this stuff comes up, it's yes. you know, structure, yes. condition, and you know that, you know, the year is built, last time it was maintained, last time it's something. Well, it's helpful happened. to you too, George, for maintaining the, the structures too, right? I mean, yeah. so multiple. But Paul and I were talking about that, how it would be really helpful and interesting to have the MS4 map with layers, mm -hmm. it would have our catch basin map on top of that, and then like you say, you can click on a catch basin and learn about its condition, when it was last inspected, and right. how much material we took out of it the last time it was cleaned, and right. where it empties out to, where, you know, where things come, you know, get into there. And that will satisfy things. EPA's uh, requirements. Just the water. Yeah, but, you know, we need to build toward that. Right. But then we have to also identify gullies that that a storm water drains into. Gotcha. And, and one one that has one is, what do you think, it's a Stockdale Circle? Yeah, oh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> by, uh, Bacaris Drive? Bacaris is the other one, yeah. yeah. They made, do they join? They join yes. down at Pine Street. Pine Street, yeah. yeah. it's the Pine Street culvert. For sure, and that goes down. And then you get the one that cuts out. And there used to be a uh, small uh, is off it of Bacaris, off of Bacaris? Is that where the Partridge. oh Partridge Lane? Yeah, there's one in there too. Mm -hmm. Where is where was the, the sawmill? Is that off of um, sawmill was in Bacaris. Bacaris, right? yeah, I think so. I'm trying to think of which side it was. So there's whatever there that trickles over whatever's buried and whatever goodies are. Who knows? But but the key thing is we've been getting a lot. Oh, look at on. on you know, a lot of information if you speak to to the UNH, you know, Storm Water Center. Okay. Okay, you need a PhD to understand them. And we need something simple, something that we can we can meet, meet the minimum. That's why I rely on, our, on retired engineers. Like, oh, so, okay. So, yeah. so numbskulls like, I can understand. You have to translate for me. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, are there any other questions we have? Uh, well, we have Aaron here. So I have a couple action items here. We're going to put Paul and John in touch with each other. That would be great. I do have a couple specific questions. Who is John? Uh, John Jackman. He's our senior asset management specialist. Or something along the lines. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a few questions that I will ask and respond via email to the board tomorrow. Uh, first slide. Go ahead. We'll check uh, the general services agreement. Make sure that's current and mm -hmm. going really? to order. Yes. For my All right. Okay. All right. That'd be great. Good. Anyway. Yeah, I think we <laughs> The power equipment company that we buy our stuff is on fire. Oh. Did we get all of our deliveries? Uh, we get our stuff. Oh, well, hopefully everyone is safe. Where is it? Grant Wood Power. Oh. Where? Grant Wood at 125. Anyway, sorry, Aaron, go ahead. You're saying the, the two orders? Uh, two items yeah, for, so for Sligo, um, there's two tasks. We'll make sure that the general services agreement is current. If not, we can renew that. That doesn't obligate the town to do anything. It just says if we do sign a task order with you, here are the stipulations, you know, rates, um, legal right. contract stuff. Yeah. And then we will develop a task order. Um, I don't know what number it is under this, maybe two or three. Right. And for a minor wetland permit, and we'll put the assumptions in there. If it turns out we need to deal with some other things, we'll talk to the board about how to handle that. It would be very helpful. Perfect.
And don't forget that and they're taken care of this year. So, at least one thing off the checklist. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much you. for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. And 705, so how about that? <laughs> you get out even earlier. Have a good night. Yeah, it's a great time. Yeah. All right, so we all have everything. We, we're set. We're good. We'll move, for your, we'll move on to the next piece of the agenda. Or does anyone else have any more comments about this process? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, thank you Paul, for all the work you've done already. Yes. That's we reported all oh, with the chairmanship. Yeah. Any gracious Wow. Aren't you blessed? <laughs> Thank you. You put all that hard work in and they make your chair. That's quite the. That's quite the. Thank you. The thank you would have been like a you know box of chocolate or you know something nice, but it was more work, right? Well, we appreciate your thank you so much. It certainly wouldn't be getting done, um, at least certainly not at the level that it's getting done. If we didn't have your help, we would be able to appreciate it. That's very true. It surprised me about the, num the amount of work that, that the EPA is yeah. for some smaller towns. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, and um, you know, some other towns may have more staff, I guess, but I don't know how many other towns our size have the expertise to be working on these sort of things. I mean, I, we don't want to be dumping you know, toxins into the river. No one wants to see that happening, but, you know, it's, you're asking a lot from, well, you're asking a lot of um, volunteer boards, and you know what I mean? So it's not like... Uh, it's true. It's very complicated, and it's very burdensome. But, you know, we signed on, right, years ago to, for this, also. 2003, but, we, you know, we didn't have a choice. Let's call it a Clean Water Act. Right. Right. Yeah, so... Whatever happened then, we're in it. We, you know, well, for sure, right. And there was something before that, right? And that's, first part, so. and that's because we're on the river that goes, causes all these issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, certainly further downstream, we have some issues there in Durham. How, yeah. many, how many tanneries were on this river yes, before? Right. Yeah, sure. Bleachery. The bleachery. I'll we'll blame it all on Berwick. It was the bleachery. Berwick, so yeah. Probably yeah. the tannery. Milton. Yeah. All started up in Milton. That's right. We'll blame it on Milton. They're further up the river. Hmm. And they blame it on New Durham. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, we all we all have a responsibility to keep the river clean, so mm -hmm. for sure. For our safety and for our future generations. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Alright, so let's talk about the Bicentennial Park flagpoles there. That's the other thing we have on the agenda so okay, we, went down, we went down today and actually looked at the depot that they would Yes, they would, thank you. Okay. It's, it's less than a thousand dollars that could be fixed up. Okay. It's, it's all cedar, that's why we're looking at it. The thousand okay. dollar rate. Yeah, that's mostly materials? It's all, it's, yeah. it's all material. Building is still structurally sound. Okay, well, that's good. So, flagpoles, whether you want to go with two flagpoles or just buy one good flagpole? And so, I, I went down there on uh, Sunday. So I happened to be downtown, and I took some photos and sent them to the board. I don't see the point of those flagpoles, to be honest. Not where they are. Not where they are. They're under a power line, as you've, no. as you've if, stated. If they were going to move on, if they were going to put a flag, we, we suggest they put one in the front. We can move the Do you rock. think you can move that rock? I don't think that rock's, I think that would. Do you think that's there? It, it's not a rock that is part of I don't of think it. it's part of Okay. If the rock can be moved, I suggest we move the rock into with a, by the gazebo and then put one flagpole up, maybe. Are you talking about the plaque rock? Not the rock no, so the that's the flag in. That's right. on the oh, separate. Okay, okay. And we could actually take, we could cut the names that are welded on those flagpoles and put it on a new pole if you wanted to, if they wanted to do that. I didn't see, I didn't see names on There's the flagpoles. names on each flagpole. Oh, I see. Whoever donated it or whatever. Right. So, I mean, that, we could take, cut that off and then we pass it to. Oh, uh, I see. You know, whether we want to buy a a fiberglass, a regular flagpole, and put a regular flagpole up with a, in a sleeve instead of rebuilding it, or we could build a flagpole. You know, I mean, it's a choice you guys, I mean, whoever wants to make. I don't think we need two, though, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming one was for like a state flag and one for the. Uh, uh, if you want both, I mean, but, I, I, who's going to maintain the flags? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. That's, that's a very good point. Put a flagpole up, and you don't put a light on it. It's got to be up and down every day. 
So, so that's the other question. So now we know what the options are. But the gazebo is repairable. Okay. And we know the major work. Okay. And the price was because we don't want to write that down. And the flagpole, we could, I'm sure we could make a flagpole, you know, less than five hundred dollars by then. Whatever we want to do with it. But again, we got to look at. Where's the money come to repair the uh, gazebo? Uh, the historical committee wants to uh, take care of it. It's part of what? They want to pay for it? Yeah, oh. out of the money that we're, we're oh. raising. So. Awesome. Okay. I, I don't know what they have. I don't remember. So we need to go. I'll bring back this information to our next meeting. At the very least, we want to do a cleanup down there. And well, we, we get that sort of thing. thing so. We're going to clean the park up anyway. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what it's on. I, I, don't, I was hoping. They, they're going to so remind me what they did. Hmm? We were going to go blow all the leaves and stuff out of it. That'd be even better. That'd be even better. But I mean, there's, there's like broken chains, and we wanted to look and see what it would cost. We fixed that there. Oh, you did? Thank you. The granite post? Yes. Awesome. Okay, well, there's one more thing we'll check off the list then. There's a post missing, too, I think. Yeah, someone yeah. snapped it off. I'm assuming probably a plow hit it. And, or, you know, pushing snow. I mean, like the right. state pushing snow goods towards the front, so. I don't know. Um, so we, we usually to, clean it up before we mow it. So. Yeah. so we wanted to look to see how much it would cost, maybe to replace that too. So these are things that the historical committee wants to look at, and it may not be possible. I don't. But uh, we're doing some cemetery cleanups in town too, of the historical cemeteries. So, and this was another one of the things. I think it's sent out on, on it's on Facebook or something. I don't know. But okay. Now the flag. Let's get back to the flagpole. So, so here's the deal. If it's not going to be maintained. The, if we're not going to put a light on it, then we're not going to do it, as far as I'm concerned, because we don't have anyone to put it, take it up and down every day. Completely concur. So, yes. um, but the other two are coming down. You, you definitely should take them down yeah. if they're a hazard, for sure. I mean, it, it looks it's terrible. An eyesore. <laughs> and an eyesore. We're also the one we're going to hurt. Yeah, because I mean, you get kids playing on it, and then it could sound together. And the damage inside the gazebo is kids kicking out them. You can see where it was kicked, yeah. to kick out from inside, you know, the railings and... Right. That's nice. And how are you going to stop that? Uh, One good thing, we didn't find any needles or anything. Okay. Well, that's a plus. Yeah, okay. that's a good thing. Even down by the river, there wasn't anything down there? To that part, yeah. Okay. But okay. so that's where I imagine you'd see things. No, that, that's used quite heavily during the day and stuff. With is it? It's people. Oh, well, that's good. I've seen vehicles in there quite often. When so we're saying we're taking out the flag poles and we're not putting up a new one. Well, we're unless saying? unless we want to unless we want to have a conversation. They shouldn't be up where they are. No, I agree. They're too close but to the power lines and they're already falling over. So let's let's just take one them of them broken half. That right. we're in complete agreement on. We need to take it out. So yeah. the question is whether or not it makes sense to um, to erect them further up. So so where else in town do we have flags flying? Here at the fire, the station. fire station. In the fire station. Well, the the park that across the fire station. It's not actually on the fire station. It's like well, the fire they station have has their own. But isn't there one in the in the Is park? Is there one in Morton Park? I don't know. It's in, it's I mean, in front of the that monument. I don't. In front of the, I thought it was. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I, don't I can't remember now. now. I, can't remember now. <laughs> I don't remember now. I know that they have it at Memorial Day. You know the ones in the ground. I thought there was one there. If there is one, then it's illuminated by the street lights, I would imagine. If there isn't one, like an actual light on that, I don't think. I don't think there is one there, though. Maybe not. Let's, let's ask the Google like machine. No, no. Let's see, more Park Rollins. We'll see right now. So the fire station has one right at the end by the door right. of their own, and they take care of that. All right. Um, and we, we put one on a building. This the wall of post office have their own. I was just right underneath just lights that were on our own mm -hmm. security lights, so and it's not on a regular here. pole. There's one here. And that's yeah. the only one we know we really maintain. Mm -hmm. I would just question how many flight poles do we need? To have do they need? I mean, it's a, it's a nice idea, I think it was mm -hmm. in the spirit of the bicentennial, but. Um, not to be anti patriotic. But the problem is, who's going to take care of that? It, it, that's, exactly. That's, that's the, the bigger problem. problem. More town ones are found. It's on us. And then the picture. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, that gets the question is when were the other ones put in and if were they approved? Yeah, well, there is no culvert at the end of the driveway, so, so no. I, I don't know. But if, if, if they were going to put a culvert, they said that they were going to take that off, that expense on. The only one that they didn't think that they had to or should have is the, the one. Right. The uphill one. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I mean like, like Caroline said, the water issue was caused by the two drivers. Well, I'm not going to, um, until they actually come in and talk to us. Right. I mean, and I'm not yeah, I just wanted to put that mm -hmm. out there. Okay. Well, it's good information to have, but that, I'm not going to. Uh, no, I mean. We've already issued our answer, and it's. Really right, and, and, but I'm just saying, you know, it's mm -hmm. not something that, that I don't believe the town did. It, it was causing that water issue. Okay. Well, that's good to know. It's the, okay. I'll leave it at that for now, then. Anything else for... Did the uh, ditch get cleaned out, though? Oh, did we, have get, we haven't ditched it yet. Okay. okay. We did some of it last fall on the upper part to try to get the water to flow, and it stayed in there. It, and it was going through the culvert, but, I mean, the culvert's higher than they're driving this. There's a bump there. There's, there's the, uh, I mean, the water's got to get to the heights before it goes through the pipe, so... Mm -hmm. gotcha. But, you know, I mean... The, the ditch beyond their yard has not been ditched in years, and that's, you know, that could eliminate some of the water issue, but if they don't do something at those driveways, you're going to still have a water issue. Gotcha. Okay, well, that's good to know. And if they come in and talk to us, we can, we can mention that, so. so. Anything else for me? Anything else for George? Thanks. No. All right, well, thanks, George. Okay, we've got three culverts replaced on the slide board already, so. Oh, uh, okay, perfect. Cross culverts, so. Yep. Chris is going to be sending you an email, they want to take the gravel pot that we're buying off of that. Yes, and, and they I... And have a new contract or something. Yes, and I, I have that. It's in the board's folder okay. um, because it's... the gravel as part of the contract... Why don't we take care of it now with your care of the sure. you can explain So, it. Um, gravel doesn't really include labor. It's in the pipe contract, but it's really just, you know, pipe Sale pricing, material. you know, because we're working with them this year. Yeah. So, they yeah. just wanted to make that a little bit more explicit and pull it out of the contract. So, okay. this is pipe pricing. Um, both pages need signing. Okay, so this is um, again just um, the first recognizing page is, that it's not it doesn't include labor. This is the actual just product. Right, it's pricing for product is the first page. At, at a at a reduced rate at a did you, contract. Did you talk to him today? No, he, he sent that email. No. And he's got another email coming out to you. They don't like Pike. Don't want that in the contract. So it may be probably the what you all called bid. 2019-1 and 2019-2 is probably going to get rewritten and okay. re-signed to exclude. That's it. That will be those that is this. So this is a separate issue. Okay. So we're kind of doing two things. Um, all right. Well, first of all, then we need to sign off on the on the separate um, the stone. So stone. right. Th this is just you're going to get the um, the reduced per ton cost right. because we're working with. That's the first page. The second page is a tax exempt certificate, so that they're not charging us sales tax on. Perfect. And that's the only reason why we're coming over to the main. Yeah. All right. So did they charge us anyways? Right. Is there any objection to me signing off on the uh, on the additional contract for stone? It's nope. it's six hundred tons at ten dollars a ton, so it's six thousand. That's the gravel, which was included in the right. So they'll come off the other two contracts. Yes. It's going to come off the contracts because we're purchasing the gravel ourselves. Why don't we do a motion just in case? I'm the only one signing, so it's not all of us. Okay. Is there a number here, or no? Just uh, stay this down. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see one, but I didn't we made up numbers to be. Able to you can just reference the date. Yeah. Okay. Report. Make a motion that we accept the Pikes uh, contract um, quote. Dated 5 2 for the sum of $6,000, which is for three quarter inch crushed stone base. We'll second that. Okay, so move and second. Then any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So I'll sign it. And I'm going to sign the second page unless there's objection so they don't charge a sales tax. No objection. I wouldn't imagine there'd be any, but you know, just for that, they're going to take it away on all the other stuff. Take it, something should take care of it. Because they're right. To my mind, it should take care of it. Yeah, oh, but if you're a state in the But they shouldn't have. Well, exactly. That's why. They never charge the sales tax for paving. No, but 
they have, every time we go up and buy stuff, they won't, hopefully they'll agree to that exemption on all this stuff. I would hope oh, you so mean in general when you go yeah, up once there? You have a, once you have a tax exempt one, it usually applies to everything. It should. Yeah. Um, they've been difficult. Like, they're all difficult. All the paving gravel places have been mm. not very cooperative about that in the past just because it requires paperwork and reworking their system. What's the physical address here? Six what? Oh, 667 Main six, Street. Six, So the 
the conversation morphed into talking about um, oh, the hiring place. up for yes. these consulting firms. So I did that. I looked into that. That's what your second okay. page is there. That's kind of a synopsis of. Um, I called three firms. Uh -huh. um, one of them declined, and this is sort of a synopsis from the other two firms. What they that, offer. Or what no? they offer and, and the costs associated. Okay, so let's we can talk about this and then chew it over and see what we if we want to move forward. So there's MRI. Uh, we'll evaluate the number of incidents that happen, level of coverage, um, and the level of coverage needed to provide the appropriate staffing level, including officer patrolman ratio. They can evaluate the number of details we perform and substantiate how many cruisers we should have and or detail rate. Um, can provide some comments as to amount and kind of space needed for the police department. Okay, that's that company. Firm B, Public Safety Strategies, um, they analyze data to determine that to staffing levels, whether we should regionalize, whether we should build a new building. If we should build a new building, they will use data from Strack Regional Planning Commission and other sources, I'm assuming the county dispatch, right? Mm -hmm. um, to determine the best size for Rollinson for the next 30 to 50 years based on projected growth of population. It's also important. Uh, PowerPoint summary of findings in this firm may negate the need uh, for, or highly reduce the scope of charge. So we can just, where, wherever it went so far, there's it like a laundry different. list of things we want the, the volunteer group to look at. And so we can reduce a lot of that because this firm would then look at that. Is that what this means? That's basically the difference in the proposals, that the first firm will answer some specific questions. Right. And you can pick the questions. Okay. Um, but they'll just, you know, they'll kind of trip over some other information while they're looking for what right. you're asking for, such as space needs. They're right. going to go down there and look around. They'll notice the space, and they'll provide feedback about that. Right. But they're not... Um, they're not evaluating data in the same way as the second firm. The right. benefit of the second firm is that they really look at the whole idea of the police station, what it does, how it's staffed, right. given Rollinsford, the number of incidents, how long they take, time right. of day, um, and Rollinsford's projected growth and where it is in the region. So, like projected growth, not just within, not just with the growth that we've um, seen over the past ten years or so, but also with the development pressure on. Portsmouth and Dover that we're going to be seeing, we are seeing and will continue to see, you know, what would that mean potentially for growth so that if they determine it makes sense to build a new police station, um, what size should it be so that it's the right thing for decades to come? Right. So, you know, that's not to say you wouldn't want a committee that might help inform where you would put such a police station or maybe whether or not it gets combined with a fire department or a town hall, but it at least gives you some data-based objective information about um, what is the size of a police station for the town given its projected growth. So all the information that it, it gives you is based on data and it, and it sort of looks at the whole picture. It doesn't tell you anything about this building? No. So Neither is, of them do. Yeah. So that is still something that has to be right. investigated. Exactly. About how to, what, comparing it to doing building new and, and what it will take to have this get brought up to code or whatever you want to say in, in maintaining it here. Right. Because that was pretty much what they were talking about. Right, so it, we're talking about doing. So to my mind, it provides a comprehensive answer to one option, which is, well, you know, it, while at the same time informing the other option, you know. Um, so in other words, it will help answer the question, has the, has the police department um, grown its space, and if so, what kind of space does it need? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't help answer whether or not this can be retrofitted and, you know, back to the Banwell Space Needs Report, you know, you can bump this building out in one way or the other. But you're right, it doesn't speak to what this building right. might need otherwise. Right. So it answers the police conversation, but it's not yeah. just about the police conversation right. because we got into a town hall conversation. Right. right. Well, yeah, it's so... But, um... Okay. 
I want to talk to Bob about some of this too, so when he comes in. So I mean, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but I mean, we should be talking to him about it as well. So right? I mean, he's the chief of police. So if we're talking about wanting to gather some of this separate information from an impartial source to help inform the decision, I you know we want to be part of that conversation. So than that. Um, so, I look at the two proposals, though, it seems like the second one seems to be more of what I was hoping for. Uh, getting the information that I was talking about last week, so. What are, the, what are folks, uh, what, are, what are other comments about these two proposals? So you had three, you said, and the third one? Declined. Declined? Declined. Okay, that's too bad. Alright, so. Miles, what do you think? Um... I tend to agree that the that firm B is is offering something a little uh, more comprehensive to what we're looking for. Um, are there other firms? I know so you contacted three. Is it worth beating the bushes and trying to find more? Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's it's time consuming. To well, it is. Um, it is. I can continue to look. Um, I think we're going to get away from more local companies. Yeah. You know, MRI was is a New Hampshire-based company. Okay. Um, the second firm is a national company, but they have local offices. So in New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think we're just going to be looking further away, okay. which may increase costs. But I can yeah. I can look into it if there's we're I guess. Is there something else that you're you're looking for? Because no, um, no, there, I don't think there's anything that they're not offering here. It's just wanting to know what the options are. What is the um, time frame that they think that from start to finish completing the job? Does they have any idea? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I would want to clarify that with them, but mm -hmm. I would get, like, I, I got the impression that it was, you know, a number of, a, a small number of weeks, not, yeah, it's but, but it's about so. getting in their queue, too. Right. True, true, right. but so this one might be longer since it's a little more in depth than the For sure. first one, um, so. Right, and in speaking with the second company, because it's database, it has a lot to do with what uh, format the data is in, mm -hmm. and whether it's in a workable format, or whether they have to transpose it into a workable format. So mm -hmm. that will impact that as well. But I can ask them um, both that question. And do they both come in and do a presentation? So, um, I just get a report. You, you basically get a report, but the second firm, um, the PowerPoint summary is really a way to keep costs down. Right. Um, it, I did. I did send you an email with um, a report that they did for Portsmouth, which mm -hmm. was, um, I think, about forty-six pages long or something like that. It was quite extensive. Did you um, I well, I can. I can resend it. Don't. No. I I'm okay, but um, right so it's a case of you can you can answer more questions and you can get more information and you can get better some you know reports. It, you know it's going to potentially affect cost. Yep. Um, so those costs are ballpark figures depending upon um, how they can get data. Right. The second the second firm is really about the data. So if data is easy, then maybe. You know, you can get some kind of better report within that same dollar amount. But I can certainly get more information about that. How did we, did we hear back from the school board on the school's resource to, to help inform about this building? I am meeting with the superintendent and um, Mr. Fortier on Thursday okay. here, and so we're going to discuss <laughs> what it can offer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice. So we can sit really on this think stuff. that would so that gives us. You still need to. Yes, I think. Yes, no matter which way you move forward with this, we still need more information about this. <coughs> so that conversation can also inform our decision on which firm 
which scope we want to go with, too. So, yeah. so I'd like to say, wait to see how that conversation on Thursday goes, I think, okay. before I think more on this. Uh, this is helpful, though. This is see what the scope of services could be. Um, yeah, um, but the scope of services, uh, you know, these are, this is kind of what they were talking about in right. terms of what what they do and how they like to operate, but they're both very customizable. That's good to know. So it's up to the board to come up with specific questions, and then, okay. you know, you can certainly tailor it to the questions that you want answered. That's good to know, too. Okay. Oh, good. So we can... Uh... And where would we get the money for this? That's a really good question. <laughs> it always comes down to the money. So you have it in Wait, contingency. Yeah, you, you have it in contingency. You have it in health insurance. You um, mm -hmm. you probably have a good amount of it in some departments. Okay. So it's definitely there. It's about reallocating. And you and I probably ought to meet and have a rebudgeting conversation. Anyway, so. Yeah, just to sort of see where we at and see where we know that we're going to spend more money and. Um, yeah. and where it might come from. Yeah. You know, not that we're really over anywhere, but we're just really good right now. We're really in good yeah. shape. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, but still, you've got. That Friday, we're but if we're going to talk yeah. about other other mm -hmm. things that are going to yeah. come up, we can talk about um, where they're going to come from and. Well, that will also like. inform our decision as to whether or not we want to move forward or not. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was this is an idea to you know help justify, in my mind whether or not we're going to be able to do something about moving folks out of downstairs. So to me knowledge is power. So but if, if it's not if it's not practical or plausible then we just can't do it. But this is good information to have. So okay. alrighty. So alright. Eversource proposal. So um, what did I want to say? I'm not sure still exactly um, where I come down on all of it, but it seems to me that um, at the very least the, um, the um, transfer station looks like it might be something we, we may be able to handle this year, and potentially the fire station too. Um, I don't know about um, if we want to move forward with um, the town hall and uh, the, the highway department, but maybe I have it back with the highway the one and the fire wasn't. But, you know, the still fire. Is. Did you read the note about the fire department that Callan had sent out? Was it today? Uh, yeah. um, it was first thing, I think, tomorrow, this yeah. morning. This morning. Um, yeah, I've been, it, they have aquafluorescent fixtures, um, which are becoming very difficult to find bulbs for. So, okay. Um, the chief's comment when I saw him last week was that he thought this was very timely and, and welcomed it because otherwise he's going to be in a pickle. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know, too. Oh, here it is right there. Yeah. So when you were saying that we could do one or two of the mutual aids, are you talking about doing it, co-funding it, and not loaning it, not on a loan? Yeah, so the transfer station, I think there were advantages to not doing the, the financing. What was it, $900? Approximately. So, yep. Nine, 976. So that one seemed to, to make sense, but that, but, um, I don't know if I have the thing I'm talking about. Fire station is almost 3,900, 3,860. He potentially could have that somewhere in his budget, too. Well, or you can just keep the existing electric rates and do it without any other. Right, right, that's right, true. right, right. Which is true for all of them. I wish we could do it all then in doing that. And then if you, if you had money that so, was left over, you could apply it to the loan without money. What I would, I, I'm not in uh, 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 opposition to that, um, Denise, at all. What I would like to do, though, is ask, reach out to the Municipal Association and make sure this is something that we could do. It's a, it's a multi-year contract, whether or not we're able to do this without the permission of the town meeting. Um, I mean, I understand that 
you're going to spend the money one way or another because mm -hmm. it's via the rates that doesn't that doesn't change yeah, mm -hmm. but you're still objecting you're still subjecting um, future boards you're still in a obligate not subjecting obligating mm -hmm. the town to to something so I would want to know if that's something we could actually do before mm -hmm. we move any further yeah. Yeah. No, I think it would be good. helpful to see the contractor's contract because they, right. you know we're only one of two towns that has done, done it. This. So, right. so you know, so my 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 guess is it's it's really workable, mm -hmm. but but what's the clause that allows it to be workable, or what's right. the right. mechanism? Right. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, that these other towns may have gone through the normal budgeting process and planned mm -hmm. this back in during their budget session, or so. maybe it requires. Some right. So I want I want to make sure that. Um, we um, we're, uh, we're doing everything. Yeah, yeah. Make so let's do that okay. because uh, if, if it is possible, I think we we would be foolish not to do it. But yeah. If we if we can do it with the, I mean even even in this with this building, if it's the uh, uncertainty, right, with whether or not what's going to happen with this building, but the, the one certainty is we still have to pay for the lights to stay on. Mm -hmm. So so. Well, if, and if you were to not stay in the building, it. Would we, um, it would improve resale value, right. essentially. Well, what we need to figure out, though, if for some reason, if we, just, if the town decides that the town hall is not going to stay in, in its, you know, town hall, traditional town hall setting, um, what are our obligations under the contract? Uh, you know, because they're retrofitting this building and it's based off of the, off of our paying the higher rate, or not the higher the. The normal rate, right? Not the reduced rate. rate. Well, are so we on the hook for hey, paying? Well, so for you've got two years and four months, and so it depends on when that would start. That's true, but, too. You know, I mean, it's it's not point. like you're going to be moving into something within that time frame. That's likely. a valid point, likely. Right. Right. It doesn't start until it's so, done. worst case scenario, you're going to owe, you know, unless you sell this immediately, in right. which case I would say you owe the balance on the loan. Right. Otherwise, you're just continuing to pay the electric rate, right. even though you're not here. But your loan is still only half of the cost, because every right. source picks up the other half. I mean, when you did it all, figured it out, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of money. And right. You would suggest going the whole... Yeah, um, yeah no, if right. the Municipal Association says it's fine to do this, mm -hmm. then I think we'd be foolish not yeah. to do it. But Before I mean, the program stops. Well, exactly, right. <laughs> oh, I mean, if we're, just, pay pay the, it, if we're just paying, if the return on investment that the highest one was two and a half years, wasn't it? That's two and three, something like that. Yeah. yeah. If yeah, and it, so we're just going to be paying the regular rates that we've been we would pay anyway mm -hmm. if we didn't do it, and then we could enjoy reduced rates after two and a half years. It's substantial savings to the town, so it would be foolish in my mind not to do it. But I wish this were something they had for residential houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, I understand why they don't. So so you'll look into that for us. I will do that. Chief, are you back there? Come on up. We'll put you aside here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Central emails on Bravo? Yes, I saw that before I came over tonight. Yeah, thank you. I don't know why we thought that um, it must be like liquor or dance or something. That they have to have a dance license for you or something? Yes. Okay. Not Raffle dance. Of course, you're right. amount of people too, right? Yeah, we were wrong, so we're happy to sign up. Entertainment license they have to have, regardless if they have one person or five hundred people down there. Oh, okay. This video. Huh. Uh, okay, the first item uh, invoice to Seacoast of Business Machines. It's number 1597. It's our annual service contract for the copier fax machine, and it's $650. Already. I'll move purchase order 1597 to Seacoast Business Machines for $650. For annual service contract. Second. All right. Any questions? That's actually twenty dollars higher than last year, so it's not that bad. All right. So, no questions. All right. So, all those in favor of purchase order fifteen ninety seven say aye. 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 Opposed. Purchase order number 1599 to two way communications. It's for the annual certification of our four radar units, and that's uh, $300. Now, come on to our radio repair. 
Fine item. We have a motion to accept purchase order 1599 to two way communications for the annual certification for the radar units for a total of $300. I'll well, second that. Any discussion of purchase order 1599? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Stack of paper. Yeah, I don't want to jinx us now. <laughs> and back in March uh, 18th, the, uh, uh, Mr. Rollo of England signed the uh, approval of standards. We just need to get the Nisa City to that now, please. Make it official. Couple of times that we sent out a alert through Mixel, it did not go through your SMS. It went directly to uh, your email only. Uh, Mixel has uh, uh, done away with the free service for the texting portion of the emergency alerts now. So I said, "What's the price to include the, uh, the texting portion?" And it's over five thousand dollars. And I said, "For the, wow. the amount of times that we use, it's just not worth it." Right, right. Having right. said that, the state of New Hampshire offers uh, basically the, the same, uh, similar type of system, but it's free oh. for emergencies and non-emergencies. So, oh, I have a contract here uh, between the town of Rollinson and the New Hampshire State Police Division of Emergency Services and Communication, and just indicating that uh, the select board is designating myself as the primary point of contact for that. For the emergency contacts, I've listed myself, a lieutenant, and uh, uh, Officer Hancock. For the non-emergency contacts, listed of those three plus Caroline. Okay. Any objection to me signing off on this? Mm -hmm. No. All right. Are you able to move the whole um, list of current subscribers? No. So yeah, we'll have a yeah, transition. Yeah. Part. We'll send out a blast, an email blast. Uh, you know, we don't want to use a Mixel in the future. You know, please sign up to the service. So can you work with um, Tia to get a link on the website and remove yes. the natural thing? Perfect. $5,000. Just want to make you aware of the fact that so we have a resident that owes the, uh, the town $330 in overdue dog fees oh. um, to um, pay on chaos. We paid the bill last year. Right. We've submitted several invoices to her to reverse us, and she's right. us off. Okay. So I want to make you aware of the fact that we've now started a small claims action against her. Okay. It cost us ninety dollars. However, once uh, I anticipate we're going to win, very win in the district court, that uh, she will then have to reimburse us the ninety dollars as well. Okay. Just to make you aware of that. Perfect. And the last item that I have for the board is. Um, I've spoken to you a couple of times over the last couple of months. I would like to promote uh, Officer Hank to sergeant, effective June 3rd. Um, I mean, he's well qualified. He's done an excellent job for us uh, thus far. Um, he's in demand. I you know at least uh, two police chiefs have asked, uh, is he happy? Will you plan to him in the future? Uh, then I don't want to stay here. So I have an, an official letter to the board requesting and recommending that we we uh, promote him to Sergeant Effective June 3rd. Okay. So, I will accept a motion to uh, promote Officer William Hancock to the rank of Sergeant. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? I think that is certainly well deserved. I'm hoping he will accept it and will stay with us. So, any other discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Do I need to sign something on here? Or? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Just no. they're asking us, right? No. So, yeah. so we'll save this for our record. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll put it in the world of realism. And if we could schedule uh, this promotion, I'd like to have the, the board present him with the Sarkin's badge. Do you want it at um, a full board meeting? Or we're coming to see you all on the 14th. Do you want it in front of all the other members of the department or whatever's better? His family would probably like to be there, right? So yeah. Maybe do it on Monday, next probably Monday night, yeah. Or whatever you have. It's probably the best thing, yeah. So, so June 3rd, that's Monday night. So yeah, June 3rd. Oh, June 3rd. Okay. Obviously, I, can, it's a I don't know why it's that next, on the 14th, because yeah. it's right there on the 3rd. All right, so let's do it on that day. It's fine by me. I don't think.
Now that I've said that, hold on. Denise, Denise, you're going to be promoting um, Officer Hancock because I'm going to be a beautiful soul in the city. Oh. Uh, it may be beautiful. I don't know. I've never been there. I'm not leaving the airport. I've got a meeting for three days at the airport. <laughs> Pretty yeah, fair. So. I have no idea. Yeah. I've never been there. And now you're going into it either. So. Joy, joy. Yeah. So, sorry, but yeah. Full endorsement. That's all that I have for you folks. Anything for me? We have a non-public, no, right? But before that, so I have <laughs> maybe opened a can of worms. I don't know. But um, as part of the, um, we started working on the, the charge for the Space Needs Committee, the reconstituting this, and, and the list got longer and longer and longer, and more technical, I think. Um, certain questions. I mean, I have to go back and look at it. But in my mind, there are other questions about. Building size, staffing levels. People are asking, well, why does Rollinsford have so many cruisers? You only have one person on at a time. All these different questions. Um, why do you need a new town? Why would you not be able to stay down there? You only have one person on at night. All these different things. I said, why are we not hiring a consulting firm to come in and look at it? We're a town that hasn't grown very large in the last, really, I don't know, 50 years. More than that, maybe. We are a town that has uh, a diverse village aspect. There's all these different aspects. That I don't know how to answer these questions. Why are we not hiring a firm to look at some of this and to inform so when there are potential no naysayers saying we don't need a police station, these are the reasons why. Or maybe, it's, maybe it is to the Congress. I don't think it would be, but maybe it would be you don't need a police station. But there, there's no, we haven't had an outside agency or, or firm come in and tell us what we need or what we don't need. And that was part of the hiccup last time too. People questioned, well, what are the motivations? Why do you have to think you have to do this now? All this stuff that, that it's hard to answer some of these questions without having actual concrete data in front of us. So we're, I don't want you to think we're doing this behind your back. I mean, we're doing it in our meeting anyway, we're talking about it, but um, it was maybe just a harebrained idea at that time came up with last week, I don't know, but it's something we're talking about and we're considering. We haven't made any decisions yet, um, but I want you to know that there's something we're considering. And they would be working with you and your officers to talk about this stuff. So, well, I'm assuming that that's why we we have to come up with questions and things. So, maybe not. Um, we may decide in the end that it's not worth the money. I don't know, but I also you know, want you to know that right. we're talking about this. I don't want you to, uh, you know, rumor sometimes festers into fact in this town when People start, little birds start chirping, and so we haven't actually had the real conversation. So, so we are talking about that. It may not happen. So, but something we're looking at, and we're going to have. Um, I have another conversation about with this building we're in. I mean, I could inform part of the conversation too. Um, the downstairs certainly will inform the upstairs, and we're having Mr. Fortier and the superintendent have a conversation with Caroline to see if if he can even lend some of his expertise to look at some of the, the issues that may be going on with this building, whether or not it makes sense to fix any of them, or maybe we're overblowing or overstating some of it, I don't know. I'm not a uh, facilities expert. He is. So um, that's going to inform part of our conversation, too. But anyway, I wanted you to know that and hear it from me. It was my hairbrain idea, so I didn't want you to. And I think we I, we started talking about it long after you. It was a very long night last week, so I don't want to belabor any more than we have to. But we need to go to non-public to talk about a personnel issue with you again, I think. Okay. So. so do we have anything else that you want to talk about some public though first? I'm sorry. Is there anything else for the chief in public? Yep. Okay, so let's do a motion to go to non-public for a personnel issue. Motion to go to non-public for personnel issue. Second. Okay, a roll call, Denise? Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike, yes, we're non public to deal with this. Oh, it's going to get longer now. I'll be back before Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we have no, no, have a good one. Well, Mike, I got picked for jury duty. Good for you. No, I'm waiting. Yeah, I ended up with two cases. For what? For the Superior Court? Or? Yeah. Yeah. He's been like looking huh. catalogs. I've been there all day today. Yeah, you know, anything? No, you can't talk about it. Choices for you all. 
They were all the interesting ones. Yeah. Criminal. You know, all of my criminal. You got to pick for two charts? That's vinyl. So you haven't actually started the case yet. Exactly. So one step, one, and uh, the, uh, the second case started like today. So you're definitely yes, on that absolutely. one. No, I'm not on that one. I got picked for the first one and the third one. Oh, third one. I'm sorry. I didn't okay. Well, how long do they, do they think it's going to last? I got four days next week and three days the following week. And I go back tomorrow to see if I get picked for another one. Really? Holy moly. Good thing you're retired, huh? Mm. And you're not going on vacation. All right, we're back. I assume you're not. You're not now, I guess. Um, all right, we are back from the non-public. Next thing we have is code enforcement workshop. It's my understanding that Mr. Clark would like to go to a training with the Municipal Association for yes. code enforcement. And so the cost of that is sixty dollars. It's under the purchase order limit, but I'm bringing it to you because it's never been budgeted for him to go to training before. Um, but I think it would be beneficial for him to go. Yeah, so, so yes. So it's you know I'm sure we can absorb it. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Okay is there well. any objection? No. All right. Then it's below the the threshold. So thanks for learning. Appointment. So tree warden and fence viewer. We have had interest in both. Um, Mr. Um, Sharpenter apologizes. He did not see the, the notice that went out. He uh, apologizes for that. But he is interested in um, uh, staying on as tree warden if we're interested in keeping him. So we have interest from Mr. Hinsman also, right, who responded. I wonder if he, he yes. interested in being the fence viewer? Um, yes, I'm sure he would. Okay. Um, <laughs> it could be a simple thing. So, uh, I, I, I move we appoint um, Ed Sharpentier to Tree Warden and Jen Hinsman to Fence Viewer. I'll second that. Well, that's a simple thing. All right, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, well, that was a simple thing that I can find. You might just make it up. Uh, employee recognition dinner. So we're waiting to hear back one more piece of information from the school. But you're going to see the the. Um, I will see them. them so on they need Thursday, to answer so that you can question. answer that. So that's fine. We will hold off. So, but if we don't have a, uh, end that information by next Monday, I'm going to suggest we reach out to the fire station and see if Mark doesn't mind us going in there and using his kitchen, and just doing it there. If we don't have all the info from the school. What are you looking for for the kept down, downstairs? Is that what you're yeah, looking for? Yeah, we need to know if we'd have to have a, one of their staff members there or in there was another question we had, right? So well, if they, if they um, require that their staff person is there for the kitchen, does that come with a cost? Right, well, clearly. Yeah. And, and he thought not, but he was going to check. Okay. So, and and um, custodian, too, we would have no, to? No, we're, we're, it's, it's otherwise free of charge. The only oh. question is um, the right. kitchen. Okay, all right. Well, that's, so we'll wait to find out about that then. I think we still, I don't want to go much further than next week without yeah, a decision because we really need to start planning and yep. getting the word out to the employees so, that this is happening and there's other decisions we need to make about like who we're recognizing and things like that so, and what we're recognizing them for and all that. So it's a new new process so we'll need to figure that out. So gas expansion in Rollins, Unifertil's coming here next Tuesday, oh, yeah, yeah, they're coming Tuesday, so no, next Monday, the 13th, to have a conversation with us about their process and why they're asking for it and cool. where they want to expand and all that. Then we can decide whether or not we want to issue sure. a, a letter of uh, support to the PUC. Um, did we find out about I? Did you? Um, did we there vote on was that? not. It was discussed last night, but there was not a decision. Okay. It was tabled. So, so we discussed last week about whether or not it made sense to keep the. Of the ex expiration dates on the the, the the building permits. I mean, maybe I'm the one who said let's wait. I don't remember, but I, I have been going back and forth with this all week. There, and as the guy that for a number of years actually filled them out for, I don't know, it, just, it fell on lots of things fall on, used to fall on the junior member of the board, <laughs> and you just sort of got stuck with it. And I guess I just kept it. I don't know, but um, it's arbitrary in a lot of cases. Yeah. I mean, it's it, that's the, that's the point. It's I thought more and more about it. I thought, well, maybe it does make sense that we, we control that, but it is really arbitrary. In some cases, we gave them a whole year. In some cases, we gave them six months, depending on what type of permit it was. If we thought that 
like if the work had already been done in some cases. I mean, it was just yeah. really just all very arbitrary. So if it can be more uniform this way, and it's easier to keep track of the permits, then we actually know what's going on. In my mind, it's, it's better to do that. We actually know what they're doing, but or not doing. So, so what does that require? So what's the answer? I'm not, I'm not yeah. So, really so, me. so the conversation point is that expiration dates are in the building code. So we don't need to have any other regulation. You don't really need to set a building uh, an expiration date. If you do not set an expiration date, it defaults to the building code, which says that um, upon approval, you need to start your project within six months and you need to be working on it continuously without lapsing for more than six months. And it really doesn't expire as long as you adhere to that. Okay. Okay. So like large, I mean, small projects is not going to matter. Like large projects, like blue one over here? Yeah. I mean, he clearly... He several extensions on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming he needs to come back in to get an extension of his existing building permit because they haven't actually adopted this yet. So what would happen if it expired? Would you have to pay the fee again? Right now, currently, um, the way it's happened is that they could pay an extra administrative fee. You know, if I mean, there is some discretion with it because there's not a policy. So if you're close to expiration and you just need you know two more weeks, you could probably work with the building inspector. If you are way past expiration, you're probably getting a whole new building permit potentially right. even. We've so, had we've had both cases to make food. Past boards have just said, okay, well, fair enough, it's just an honest mistake, and you're still working on it. Here, here's a six month extension, or whatever you need, time you need. And some boards have said, well, clearly, you haven't done anything in X amount of months, you've been over for, you gave it to you for a year, why didn't you do anything? You needed to make a new application. So, like, there was a pool house or something down on Sligo Road, didn't we? Yes. Did we extend it? Did we make them come back? I mean, so th there was, it happens. Not uh, frequently, but you know, it, it does happen. So. It is a little more consistent that it's in the hands of one employee now rather than the board that changes more. Yeah, right. and so that's good, but there really isn't a policy about it. So, where well, there's not a policy about it, you could default to building code, and that's at least a, you know, mm -hmm. an ad hoc policy. Well, there's the state building code, which is consistent, which is right. a positive thing, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't think we should be um, overriding the building code. Like if it's there, the building code. Well, you, you can. Yeah, the right to. I mean, yeah, you have the right to if if it makes sense and you want to. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Mike that it's unless we have some more concrete guidelines, six months for a small, a year for a large, then it's arbitrary, and you know we're just causing the, the permittee more problems. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Well, and it it it. it creates more um, administrative oversight. <coughs> it creates inefficiencies in having it to does, because you're chasing down different different permits. And, yeah. and so it's, it's, it's moving, it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's making more, I think about it, it makes more and more sense to do this so it follows the state building code. But again, we're authorized to do it the way we want to do it, so we don't have to make any changes. We could just say, nope, pass, and just scratch, and scratch it off. So that's what we want to do. And Tom is asking to make this change. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think it makes sense. At least what do you think? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so let's have a motion to uh, to um, let's see, uh, to follow the to change exp uh, the building permit expiration dates to follow uh, state building code protocols. Uh, so That's moved. That there you go. Did you say? Did you do it? Yes. Oh, oh, I'll second. <laughs> okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 aye opposed? All right, so hopefully bring a little more consistency to that process, we hope. If not, well, we can revisit it. So. Policy review. Uh, does anyone want to discuss the three tonight? Eventually, we're going to have to, so. <laughs> But what I would suggest, I think I maybe did before, um, is having an abbreviated meeting on a Monday night, like just say, okay, the first half an hour will be will be department head issues. If you have issues that need to come before the board, bring them in tonight, and we'll 
do POs, whatever we need to do. And then we take the next hour and a half or whatever we want to take, and we start working through to one of the three. Set a date to do that? That so would that's... be fine by me. So we can actually, so we don't have to take all that. Right. Right. We can actually start working on them. That makes sense to me. Wait a moment, it's got eight new invites from work meetings. I can't wait. All right, let's see. Let's make this meeting first before I accept any of them. All right, so we have, next week we have um, Unitil. Unitil coming in, so that's pretty much out, because they're coming at 7, right? Yeah. So we could start the, um, we could start the 20th if we wanted to. We cannot do the 27th because it's uh -huh. a holiday, and hopefully we're not coming in that night. So if we want to, um, we'll let all the department heads know, obviously they'll know that the 27th is Memorial Day, we're not coming in. So that the first half an hour of the meeting, unless you know they can't make it in, then they can they can come in early, or they could just leave the, the purchase order with with us, and we can take it up in the folder. But so we will have um, the regular meeting start at six thirty and end at seven, and then for the next hour, maybe an hour and a half, we'll go till eight thirty. We'll um, um, work on um, whichever one we want to work on. Sounds good. And that's on the 20th. Yep. Okay. Are what, we going to have anything to like, I will get us going? Something. Yes, okay. absolutely. That was, I will. Right. So why don't we now make that decision? Do we want to work on welfare personnel or purchasing first? I'm having, I'm in a standstill waiting for templates from um, Primex's contracted attorney for the employee handbook. So we're not going to do that. Well, actually, I'm hoping that I can um, squeeze that one a little harder and get that one to flow because that's okay. the one that I would prefer. Do you want to start with that one? That, but um, if that one doesn't work out, then I would suggest that we go to purchasing. Okay. So will you ensure okay. then that um, we have those materials? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Timely, like a week or so ahead. So you can read over so that. Can that. Them and so yes. you're comfortable with what you use the props so that you handle welfare already? At this point? Um, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm well. I'm not not saying that either. But the priority for you would be the personnel first. Welfare is going to um, ultimately have to go through legal review. Mm -hmm. um, there is some minor revision that can happen in house, but it's really on me to create the table of. Um, it, it's going to take some work on my part before it gets to that point. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of, um, because we have a good base now, um, I think it can wait and I would rather prioritize the others, I guess is Got what it. I'm saying. The personnel has a lot of subsections mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that we can knock some of them off pretty quickly. Okay. And they should be fairly small and pretty quick, I'm hoping. Sounds good. Make okay. sure you just make sure you get us that information. Yes, time, absolutely. Please. So we can not sit here in a meeting and read through it first. <laughs> no, no, I won't do that. Perfect. All righty, everyone's okay with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, town administration standing items. Board member activities. Denise, do you want to go first? or? Yep. Um, we have a, um, uh, Carolyn and I will be doing um, rec interviews tomorrow night. Oh, nice. And... Wednesday night I have budget committee. Okay. I think that's it. Right. Seems like that it? Yeah, I think that's it. Hi. Um, so is there a planning board meeting tomorrow night? There is a planning board meeting okay. tomorrow night. So uh, I will go with ex officio. Perfect. Really? Well, you can't. You're you're doing recommendations. Oh, no, she's no, going to no, be, no, I'm she gonna be before that. Oh, okay. But yeah. if you, I mean, if you're having an interest and want to sit no, in, by no. all means. I no, can. I was planning to come anyway, but I mean, I, I can I can certainly serve as ex officio if you want the night off. Um. <laughs> That's very kind of you. No, I don't mind going. Um, John Krebs provided a, um, a technical review for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit on Clement Road. Oh, okay. And then otherwise, um, Clement Road, where? What's here? Okay. The, the large house on the corner of... No, it's the red one. Oh, right, they moved. the new bell one. <laughs> yeah, they used to have that. The red, they had all that was part of the Oldenburg subdivision that's 
not in the subdivision, but like not in Delaware. Whatever, they, they, go, they go through the process, they go through the So, um, so there's that, and so, picking a CIP person. Yes, please, for that. Yes. Um, so no stormwater on Wednesday? There is no stormwater. There was confusion about that, and I'm not sure why there was confusion about okay. that, but I need to tell the other members, because I think everybody understood that. It was on my calendar. Yeah, yeah, and so I'm not sure okay. what happened with that. But um, You had a mini one tonight. We did have a mini one tonight. But... Yeah, REC is meeting Wednesday, too. So I gave up the so room storm for, stormwater. for them. Um, so I will reach out to them and okay. let them know. I have a historical committee meeting on Thursday night and lots to share with them for our yes. earlier conversations. Yes. So all of you with your um, committees, it's not too late if anybody wants to submit committee approved content for the newsletter for anything happening between June and November. Right, the chair of the historical committee wrote a very nice one. Actually, I'm not being flip, you wrote a very nice one. And then um, we all came to realize that it goes out with the tax bills and the events that he was describing in this very nice update will have already happened. So we can't ask people to show up to them. So, yeah. But I might suggest that if your committee wants to, that maybe if you go out as an email to the residents, it's just an update about yes, it will. what this that will be is up to. That is definitely it's going to be on Facebook and stuff like that. So that's going to happen. But that's good. We, we're excited because we thought we'd be able to be included in it. I don't want to work with that. It's not going to happen because all the things have already happened. So. But I wouldn't want the work to go for not because it was I nice know. that oh, no, they did it that. Yeah, no, no, no. We're, we're going to set it up to have Tia send it up to Okay. I think that she didn't already. She might have already. Okay. That's it. Uh -huh. Okay. So. Oh, Tad Administrator, what's your update? Well, we talked about a lot of it already. I'm going to, I'm going to meet with the um, superintendent and the facilities director on Thursday and talk about um, what they feel they can offer about assessing this building and its yes. needs and the costs and, uh, and perhaps a plan. Mm -hmm. So I will report back about that. Um, stormwater got rescheduled, but in the meantime, Paul and I will be still working on making sure we keep things moving for the next meeting. Um, you have in the Manila folder over there, um, it is the season of exemptions and credits and abatements. So those are the veteran credits um, and on the bottom one elderly exemption um, application. The top, um, they all have little signature tabs so you can see that they all need to be signed. Um, right above that they say that they do or don't qualify and why. There's one veteran credit that does not qualify, the others do. The elderly exemption does not qualify. It exceeds income limits. So they've been reviewed. And so Chad has, Chad has reviewed them, made his recommendations. He's still reviewing abatement applications. A lot of them still have to do um, are. So do we need to do the veterans tax credits and the elderly exemptions tonight? Or they do, do not have package? to be tonight, but they should happen soon. So if not tonight. So in the past, we met uh, in our public to discuss the merits of each of them and then. You and certainly then sign could. Them in public. There, so there are four. Do we need to do that? My question is do we need to do that this time? The last time we did this was like a full review. Well, we right. Had, we had that was an audit. An audit, audit rather, yeah, that right. was the internal so. audit, and we did all of them. And right. that's not what this is. This, okay. These are new so applications. But by all means, if you want to discuss them and discuss what qualification standards are and the ways in which they did or did not meet them, we can certainly go over that. It's a, it's a good learning experience, but it does take time. So that's up to the board. Okay. Happy to do it. But like I said, they don't need to be. Um, they don't need to be there. But they should happen next week at the latest because they need to. They should be reflected before the. We can just sign off on them now that people are ready. We can yeah. take a look at them. Yep. We can sign. So there's nothing controversial. They've been reviewed by right. Chad and. Right. And there's a, we had to review each of them individually before we do an audit. That is the difference. So I just want to make sure people understand that there's a difference in the process. These are just normal applications that come in. There's a normal process. The chat reviews them, we sign off on them. When we do it, the state requires us to do an audit every five years? At, least, years? Once in every, at least once in every five years, which, so, by the way, we would have liked to do more frequently. And so that's a deeper dive. I mean, you know, like, so, uh, 
there are reasons why people could no longer qualify, you know. Mm -hmm. So surviving spouses get remarried. Well, they, and people they die and the adult children try to benefit. Keep it, and, and then right. don't qualify. So. so, by all means, if you have any questions about why they, um, about what the note says about why they did or didn't qualify, we can hold off and discuss it. The veteran credit is very specific about um, 90 days of service within right. cer certain time frames mm -hmm. and medals for certain terms of service. The elderly um, exemption is about proving um, income and asset limits. So the, on the two thirds of the way down on your left in your left hand you'll see. Uh, oh, I see. Is yeah, okay. I'm just looking at the uh, this, this this is the one that did not qualify. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have uh, doesn't have 90 days of um, well, but has a lot of service, but not 90 days in, in, that, in a qualifying in that, period. Yeah. So, and the qualifying period is on here. I used to be on the application, so people it's, understood what they needed. I think it just references the RSA, which is very specific. Maybe we, um, maybe we just printed it out before then. Uh, yeah. So we understood what the what the qualifying service dates were. And I can do that if you. Um, well, I mean, Chad has reviewed it, and so he. So his question: Do people want to meet in non-public next week to discuss these individually, or are, are you? Um, Satisfied with just taking Chad's recommendation. Um, it seems like there might be some. It might be worthy of discussion. Yeah. Kidoki, we will do it next week then. Okay. All right. What else is in your little red folder? We have a letter from the Department of Environmental Services. Um, a, a wetlands um, permit uh, that I imagine has been granted to Kevin and Sylvia Rodden of um, Berwick, Maine. They have property on Rollins Road, tax map one lot 57-5, and um, the permit description is to dredge and fill 1,088 square feet of pulse-right scrub shrub wetland to install a 15 inch by 40 foot culvert for continuation of an existing shared driveway to access a planned area for development of a single family residential lot. Um, okay. And there are conditions on there are that. Conditions. Um, this doesn't need our signature? It does not. It it's advisor. just kind of an FYI, and a copy went to the Conservation Commission. Okay. Perfect. Great, that's it from here. That's it? Yeah. Alrighty, so the first thing we have in this folder is a letter of um, an offer of employment um, for a camp counselor. It's going out to uh, Jordan Wall, W-A-L-L, um, offer of uh, employment for a full-time counselor. Is there any objection to us hiring? Um, it's just been vetted, obviously, by the committee. Um, and the, uh, uh, deputy director, I guess, or assistant director. Any um, objection to hiring her? No. Yeah. All right. We'll sign off on it then. Do you want, do you want to keep it? Yes. Okay, so we'll it. All right. Next we have. Um, so last week the um, the PTO wanted to do a raffle, and I foolishly said, "Oh, silly PTO! You have to get a, a letter from the police chief." Silly select board chair, you know, a letter from select board. So, um, it was if you wanted to have a dance, you had to go to that. So, I apologize. So, is there any objection to allowing the PTO to hold the raffle? No. No. All right. So, if you want to come claim your letter, do you want to mail it to her? Just a question though. Why did the school board not sign it instead of the select board? 
because that's what the statute says. Oh. <laughs> it's taking place in the town. In the it's town, not about not just who's putting on the okay. rifle. It's about that it takes place in the town. But they're under the umbrella of the school board versus of our. Yeah, that's for sure. Asked. But it, but it happens within our yep. boundaries. Okay. So. That's fine. Apparently the statute says, I thought it was the police, it's also probably so. All righty. Um, and we do this for the Sam Ames deal every mm -hmm. year, too. I, I don't know why. Anyways, I was wrong. Say that again, I was wrong. All right, so we have purchase order 1633 to the state of New Hampshire, to the treasurer of the state of New Hampshire, uh, for New Hampshire State Park uh, passes. This is for summer rec. In the amount of $235, so they can prepay for them and they can pay a discount. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Oh, I can tell you it's how much was there? Two thirty-five. I got two hundred thirty-five. Have you gotten any money from them at all? Money from where? Oh, people have. Yes. Do you have? Do you have the money? Well, regardless of whether we have the money, they have budget money. So there's money in Sports Engine, which hasn't been transferred okay. yet. Okay. Okay. But but it'll all work out. So okay. it's fine. Right. So it's for uh, ten of the uh, yeah. summer fun passes. So. They get a discount, so it's great. Uh, so it saves the program money. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 aye Opposed? All right. And the final thing in our teal folder this evening is um, the certificate of title transfer for the truck that we've sold. For, um, so it's... Um, Title, transfer of title from Town of Rollinsford selling the 28, uh, 2008 uh, GMC C650 to Mr. Matthew Plaza of Auburn, New Hampshire, in the amount of $22,500. So we have already approved the sale. Is there any objection to me uh, signing over the transfer of title? Sign away. Sign away. All right. Sign away. Great. He's coming in tomorrow with cash or a bank check for minus the hundred dollar deposit. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I have to sign out that and have to sign on your own seller. Yes, right by the red in the top box there. The seller. Top seller line. I'm going with the uh, where the arrow is, so. Mm -hmm. How we like it. I used to have to stick to Suzanne, so, and Ed, so, what goes around comes around. Community input. Yes, Celia, come on. Um, or you sit. I'll just ask my question. Celia Lake Bull, 426 Washington Street. There are specific statutes. Did you guys want a copy of them regarding the raffles um, that I could forward you? No, we're good. Okay. The, the chief was just, we were, it was, it was, um, it was just who had to sign the authorization. That it, worked um, it was brought to my attention by somebody else, and I guess not many people are well versed in it, so I just... He yeah, actually sent us the address. He did, actually. No, no, no. We do have it now that you said it. I do remember seeing that email from him, so... Yeah. I think the takeaway is that if you have a raffle, you actually have to have a prize and give it away to someone. As long as you have that coverage, you're okay. Any other community input? All right. Seeing none, we will adjourn at 8.36. Have a nice night.